In this video, I want to talk about when you should apply for an MBA. The first thing I want to say is that this question is not about you. This question is about how the school is going to see you. The first big question is which year should you apply in? And this is mostly a matter of when are you going to have enough work experience? The schools are looking at a few different angles on this. So, of course, every MBA program, you will participate in classroom discussions, you'll participate in your study group, and the school wants to know that you have enough experience to make valuable contributions in that regard. Second, the school wants to make sure that you will be attractive to employers after the MBA, and although this is a bit of an oversimplification, when the employer is shopping for new MBA students, and they're all almost the same price, the employer is pretty likely to say, well, I'll take the one with a little bit more pre-MBA work experience rather than the one with a little bit less. Many employers do prefer a little bit longer pre-MBA work experience. Last of all, the, if you've had a little bit longer experience, it's more likely that you've had some kind of leadership responsibilities at work. That's important both for sharing them with the class, but also setting you up to benefit from some of the leadership development programs at the school. If you've never been in any kind of leadership position at work, then it can be hard to learn much about it if you have absolutely zero practical experience to refer to. Mostly, you will see that the average work experience, as measured when you enroll, is going to be between four and five years of experience. I wanted to apply straight out of three years of consulting, and her advice for me is that if you really wanted to have um, the best shot, um, you, she recommended me stay actually for an extra year and gap just to kind of write it out, get more experience from an operational standpoint, build relationship with, with my supervisors, managers, um, and, and, and my team. Um, and it, it, was, it was a big kind of struggle for me because I've three years and I'm applying for MBA has always been a part of my plan. And I hear that from Alice. I, I kind of doubted that initially, but, it, but at the end, I kind of just took the risk and, um, but, you know, listen to Alice and, and waited for a year. They, I think that was the best piece of, of advice I've never received. Other considerations about when to apply can be more tactical. So, for example, have you done any campus visits yet? Networking with the schools is an important part of winning admissions and showing them that there's a good fit between you and the program. But the schools run campus visit programs only at certain times of the year. They don't start them up right away when the new students get on campus. It's already pretty overwhelming for them, so they do it a little bit later in the fall. Then on the other end, when everyone's getting ready to go out on their internships, they end it a little bit before the summer. So if you are ready to apply, but you're watching this video in June or July, just know you're not going to have a chance to do that part of visiting the schools or getting to know them that way, and that can be a small negative factor. Another factor, so, do you have enough time to write your applications? That we've worked with a lot of different applicants. It is a creative task. It is very difficult to do this in a system where you take a week off of work, then you sit down every day and you're creative for eight hours in a row, and you end up with a great application at the end of that. If you want to have your best application, make sure you've got enough time to actually think about it. I would have tried to start my essays a little bit earlier. I think I ended up getting feeling a little rushed in the end, um, I ended up submitting my applications um, at the very last day or so. And there's nothing that I would have done differently other than I think maybe I would have gone for round one so I would have had more time to visit more schools because again, it was not something I anticipated being so critical, but it turned out to be um, the reason why I chose to go to Warren and the reason that I chose not to apply to Harvard is because I visited both those schools and I could see myself in one and I could definitely not see myself in the other. Number three, if you're looking for help on your applications from an admissions consultant, you have to wonder, is good help still available? That it's no secret that applicants who are shopping usually look at reviews, they look at the quality of what the consultant might have shared publicly, and the people who have better reviews have more demand for their service and that demand comes earlier. So the very best people at making applications are going to be booked up earlier in the season. And if you're looking for that help four weeks before the deadline, six weeks before the deadline, 
you have to wonder for just a minute, think to yourself, why does it make sense that this person still has capacity to take me on? Why was there not demand for their services earlier and why are they not already full by now? Last of all, a few considerations about the application round between round one, round two, or round three. You have to think in terms of the round about how the school's process works. They're trying to build a class with many different kinds of profiles in it. Then at the beginning in round one, it's wide open, no one has been placed yet, and they can admit the candidates that they like. But then in round two, some of the seats have already been taken up and that's not going to be even across every category. In categories that are overrepresented with many applicants to choose from, those can fill up faster. So I strongly encourage you, if you know that you're in an overrepresented category, for example, applicants and um, men in the tech or finance industry without a lot of experience outside of work, no extracurriculars, applicants from India or China, other categories where there's just a huge number of applicants, do yourself a favor and try to apply in round one so that you avoid the risk that the school likes your profile, but they decline you because they feel like they've filled up your category already. Second thing, I'm going to say almost no one should apply in round three. There can be a few gaps in the class still, but they're filling up very specific slots at that point. So the chances of admission at top highly selective programs are usually much lower. You will see as you go down the rankings, the dynamic can be the opposite. Lower ranked programs may struggle to fill all the seats and may be no problem there. So this is a little bit situational. Last of all, in terms of thinking about when to submit the applications, I want to encourage you try to submit them all in the same round. On the one hand, this means that you can get all your offers on the table. You're in a better position to negotiate the financial aid and pick the offer that you really want, as opposed to staggering them where you get one offer in the hand, there's another program you would have applied to in the following round, and if you want to keep your options open, you now have to put down a deposit at that round one program before you make your round two applications. It's also going to be less work than you think, because once you've done a few of the applications, the ones after that will become easier and easier as you know your profile and you know how you want to speak about it. So those are some considerations for when you should apply.